Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! heaven and earth, or Theo Usherwood, our political editor, has to find out what the Foreign Secretary was doing yesterday with Rex Tillerson, the Secretary of State, um, the American Secretary of State. So we're looking for details on Iran, Syria and Yemen specifically, I think, um, because I don't understand how our Foreign Secretary can have a meeting with the United States Secretary of State in London and our newspapers only report on something he's told them he's going to do at Cabinet the next day. I, I just think that is what they call a democratic deficit, Theo and I. Like Batman and Robin fighting this curious corruption of news media that appears to be endemic in Britain at the moment. But we can only do it with your help. Um, and I'm going to need a lot of it next. I absolutely love this story, which I'm now probably going to struggle to find. Um, it is a story which involves a sort of side of the world that I didn't really understand. I have quite a lot of... Um, followers on Twitter. I've got about 280,000 now, which is quite an interesting uh, situation to find yourself in. Lo lots of people have got lots more, lots of people have got a lot less. But I didn't realise that I could potentially use this to uh, get free stuff. Um, I, I, I didn't know how commonplace it was until I stumbled across this story today to get in touch with businesses and claim that your social media following should somehow qualify you to get free stuff. I knew David Beckham kind of did it. I, I, I don't mean that he rings them up and says, hello, can I have some free stuff? I mean that he obviously gives such cachet to clothing, for example, simply by wearing it, that it's hard to imagine him paying full retail price for it if the company involved is, is going to get more advertising kind of bonus than money can buy. I didn't know, and I know I'm sounding naive, but this is the whole point of this new feature on the programme. And by feature, I just mean topics that we'll cover irregularly. It's inspired by one of the oldest, um, uh, but still most effective broadcasters in Britain on a, on a different radio station earlier this morning, asking a guest with a curious inflection in his voice, doxing, like what's doxing? Now, I'm not what you would call an expert on social media. For me, it stops with Twitter. So Snapchat and Instagram are undiscovered countries, but I've got children and a wife who are um, looking for different interactions with social media from the ones that I seek routinely. And they, they, they know what Snapchat and Instagram are, so I'm not stupid. But the idea of not knowing what doxing was in the, in, in, in the modern world struck me as a little bit ridiculous. Doxing is when you seek, because it's happened to me, you seek to reveal on online details. People have posted pictures of my front door on, uh, on social media, bless them. Um, and the point is that, that that it's done to intimidate. It's, you know, I'll tell you his address, I'll tell you where he comes from. If someone, especially if someone's got an anonymous Twitter account and someone else does the research, you wouldn't believe how easy it is, if you know the right people, to get a, a name and address and even an ex-directory telephone number for people um, tweeting anonymously on Twitter. It's, it's absolutely unbelievable if, if you know what you're doing. And, and what they do is release that information and encourage other people to be abusive um, IRL in real life, if you like. So that's the background to this. I thought, well, crikey, if, if, if one of the most prominent uh, news-based programmes in the land is, is, is conducting interviews without knowing what doxing is, we probably need to start swimming in the opposite direction of finding out more, not sitting on our laurels for knowing more than the average middle-aged bloke does about this world, but finding out as much as the average 20-something bloke or the average teenager does. To wit, I introduce you now to a young woman called Elle Darby. Hands up if you've ever heard of her. No. Oh. Jacob? No? Beth? Elle Darby? So she's not what you would call the best-known YouTuber on the planet, but she was, she felt, well-known enough to offer a cafe and hotel owner uh, publicity via her social media accounts in return for a free stay. Um, it's the Charleville Lodge Hotel in Dublin that she contacted, requesting a free room over the Valentine's Day weekend in exchange for promotion. Now, there are two elements to this story. The first is to find out more about it, and the second is to find out how much free stuff I can get with 280,000 followers on Twitter. Um, that's tongue-in-cheek. Mm. Mm. 
She has 87,000 YouTube subscribers and 87,000 Instagram followers. She asked whether the owner of this hotel in Dublin might be interested in collaborating. Now, this, to me, is absolutely fascinating because either... If this is an outlier and this kind of conduct is completely bonkers and no one's ever heard of anything like it before, we've not got a topic here. And we will talk probably about the Telegraph's front page looking at childhood obesity. But I really hope there's a topic here because I really hope you know stuff about this world that I don't know. You have to presume that the 22-year-old must have had success in the past when asking for free stuff in return for a collaboration. I should stress at this point that while I am more than happy to take free stuff off anybody, I will never give it a positive review um, just because it was free. I'll give it exactly the same review I would have given it if I'd paid for it. That presumably is going to put off some companies looking for promotion. Um, I might promise not to post anything if it's rubbish. So if you send me a Bentley this afternoon and I drive it home and I can't handle the clutch, then I won't post anti-Bentley stuff on Twitter, but I won't post pro-Bentley stuff either. It seems to me that what she's doing by offering a collaboration is literally just asking for free stuff because you couldn't really turn around after getting a free hotel room and slag it off on social media, could you? Or, you know, in the unlikely event of this hotel having... Um, I, I don't know, we, we once went to a place, a hotel, and um, there's no delicate way of push, putting this. If you're having your lunch, just look away now. We, we, we checked into a hotel, got shown up to our room, and the lavatory hadn't been flushed. Yeah, and no, it was not, yeah, exactly. If it's yellow, let, let it mellow was not what was going on in this particular. I thought that was a little rough. So, you know, I, I wouldn't take a picture of it and stick it on Twitter because I've got a very uh, erudite and sophisticated following. But that's the kind of thing you do negatively on social media. So, here's the thing. I, I, I genuinely, you can tell from my voice, either I'm sounding really, really old to you or you're sharing my shock. Or both. I'm sounding really old to you and you're sharing my shock because you know more about this world than I do. Hi there. I hope this email finds you well. I'm emailing in regards to a possible collaboration on social media. Now, she, she, when the hotel owner posted this on the internet, he uh, removed her details. But she's since gone back online to uh, identify herself as the person who sent it. So I, I, that's why we're comfortable um, using her name. I'm emailing in regards to a possible collaboration on social media. My name is L Darby. I work as a social media influencer, mainly lifestyle, beauty and travel based. I am on a... Uh, this is me talking now, not L Darby. I'm on a fact-finding mission here. I, I'd love to just get a handle on how much you can earn doing this sort of stuff. An awful lot of kids talk about this as a career option. We mentioned it last week after some research came out. I just want to know how that... Because it's not. I'm not taking the mickey out of this as a living. I'm taking the mickey out of this as a, as a, as a request for free stuff. Uh, as a living, this is partly the future. The, these homegrown, self-started, uh, filmed contributions to the national conversation, to the international conversation, are huge. Uh, whether you're playing video games or sharing your thoughts on the state of the nation, this is a large part of the media's future. And I can tell you now that the old men running newspapers have not got a scooby-doo what to do about it. Nor do I, actually, but uh, at least I'm aware it's happening. So she's a social media influencer, mainly lifestyle, beauty and travel-based. I have over 87,000 YouTube subscribers. Is that a lot? Is that a lot? I don't, I don't even know if that's a lot. I should look at some of my stuff on YouTube and see how many subscribers that's got, but I don't really do it through the auspices of LBC because we've got our own websites. How many subscribers has LBC got on YouTube? Can we find out? Uh, I have over... Because if it's got more than 87,000, I'm putting in for a freebie from the local travel lodge tonight. I have over 87,000 YouTube subscribers, and then she prefer, pr provides links, as well as 76,000 Instagram followers. My part... This is where I get a little bit baffled. We've only got 26,000 YouTube subscribers. All right, I take it back. 87,000 is quite a lot, although I think we try and push traffic through our own website, don't we, rather than through YouTube. 
Um, my partner and I, I've got 280,000 on Twitter, so stick that in your pipe and smoke it. My partner and I are planning to come to Dublin for an early Valentine's Day ex weekend from February the 8th to the 12th to explore the area. As I was searching for places... Remember the call I also need is the one that tells me that I'm being completely unfair and what this woman has done is absolutely unremarkable and completely within her rights. Because at the moment I'm on the same side as the hotel owner who thinks it's almost unbelievably absurd. But maybe that's because we're both old gits. I don't know. As I was searching for places to stay, I came across your stunning hotel and would love to feature you in my YouTube videos, dedicated Instagram stories, posts to bring traffic to your hotel and recommend others to book up in return for free accommodation. Last year, I worked with Universal Orlando in Florida and it's been amazing for them. Let me know if this is something you'd be interested in doing. I look forward to hearing from you. Now, the owner of this hotel chap called Paul was a little bit shocked by it um, rather than offer her free board and lodging he shared the email on Facebook with identifying features removed to be fair to the fella that's important um, and well everything kicked off some argue and I agree with them I'm just trying to work out whether this is part of that model that blogging is part of modern business I don't know how many potential customers, a 22-year-old social media influencer would send to a Dublin hotel. But then, as I keep stressing, it's not a world that I know everything about. Um, and what happened then is there was a big toing and froing on social media. She outed herself as the sender of the original request for a freebie and somehow turned that into an accusation of bullying. I don't know how you can bully someone who you haven't named, um, who then names themselves and claims victimhood with regard to bullying. But I'm, I'm open to persuasion and correction on that. And he rather brilliantly um, sent her an invoice for about four million quid in return for all the free publicity that she's got out of this online saga. I suspect he's slightly over-egged the pudding on that one because I... Um, didn't come across it myself until today, and he's already put in the invoice for publicity. The invoice states that she should be charged. Crikey, it has gone nuts. How did I miss this? For the provision of features in 114 articles across 20 countries with a potential reach of 450 million people. Um, uh, uh, she hasn't responded yet to his comments, but she replied at the time with a video titled, I was exposed, so embarrassing. These were all 30 years plus people, internet bullying, a 22-year-old girl who is just trying to run her own business and raise awareness of what appeared to be a stunning Dublin hotel. And that, my friends, what with me being such a snowflake, that actually made me feel sorry for her. Because if this is a completely normal mode of operation that the owner of the hotel just happened to be unaware of, then... No, nope, sorry, I've, I've lost all sympathy for her again because it was, it was her who, who put her name out there. The owner of the hotel didn't. He was mocking the practice, not the individual. And we will try to do the same. We will try to examine the practice, not the individual. How could a bloke in his mid forties Look, me, all right? How could I know? If I ran a... What am I running? Can I run a frock shop? Yeah, I'm running my mum's old frock shop. Imagine that the cards had fallen differently and instead of delighting you with uh, exclusive political insights and analysis, hilarity and knockabout conversation um, on LBC every day, imagine if when mum decided to hang up her, her tape measure and, and, uh, and give up her little dress shop on Cumberton Hill in Kidderminster, imagine if I decided to, to, to take over. How on earth would I know? If I got a message from a, a blogger, a social media influencer, offering to wear some of my clothes for free uh, in return for publicity, so I'd give her a frock, she'd wear it, and then she'd stick it on Instagram, say, I got this lovely frock from Jimmy's on Cumberton Hill in Kidderminster. How would I know whether I was getting good value or not? 0345 6060973. Have you been approached? Uh, and was the experience positive or negative? And the most important question of all, although I stress this is entirely theoretical, how much free stuff could you realistically expect if you've got 280,000 followers on Twitter? It's 12.18, you're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. Your answers to all of these questions, and no doubt more, after this. Um, should you want to hear her? Do we, is that unfair? I don't think it is, because this is, this is the point. This is where I think social media and real media, not real media, traditional media, clash. Because the, the woman who's at the centre of something of a brouhaha, 
uh, after asking for a freebie at a hotel in Dublin. And uh, possibly for generational reasons, the owner of the hotel just didn't understand. And so took to social media to mock the request without identifying the requester. Then the requester went public um, to, to sort of complain. And uh, it's like 53 seconds. Should we listen to it? Yeah, all right, here you go. Over the last couple of nights, my partner Connor and I have been discussing going to Dublin for a little weekend away, the weekend before Valentine's Day, and I decided to contact some hotels, asking if they would like to collaborate. I basically, I go visit them, I stay in the hotel, I feature them on vlogs, I put them on my Instagram, I talk about the hotel, I write a review, whatever. In return for a discounted or complimentary stay because that same hotel would not be able to go to a magazine or to a billboard or to a television advert for a free review in something that could potentially be bringing them a lot more business. I feel so disgusting having to say this. I feel so vile and oh, it makes me kind of feel sick. But as a 22 year old girl who's running her own business from her home, I don't feel like I did anything wrong in that. Well, let's find out what you think. I think I I mean I think it was a little bit vulgar. But then again, if it was Madonna um and y y she was staying in your hotel in Dublin, it would be great guns. Uh, let's just shut up James and listen. Dan's in Swindon. Dan, what would you like to say? Hi James, how are you? All right. Yeah, I'm pretty good, mate. Yeah. Good. Yeah, this is a really interesting topic that you're talking about this actually because we've just been talking about this. So, um we run a sports clothing and injury support brand yeah um and i would you know we're not huge we've been going about 18 months nearly two years i'd say we get 40 to 50 messages a day on linkedin from people asking us if they can work with us or if we can send what, them can i ask stuff. what sort of brands you 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 work with so so you don't have to i don't want to embarrass you and i am on a bit of a on a bit of a journey of discovery here but but no, i presume yeah. that they're going to be household names if you're getting that much traffic so no, so we're actually the brand ourselves. We're Bearhug Sports. We're a we're a we're a sports company, and we actually make our own brand. Cool. Um, so we're only small. So you know, quite a lot of people haven't sort of heard of us. So just tell me the name again. Bearhug Sports. Bearhug. Yeah. That's a lovely so, name. And what sort of sports yeah, so stuff do you do, sports. Dan? If you don't mind me asking. Yeah. So we do a lot of support. So we'll do sort of um, injury support for rugby, golf, tennis boxing that sort of thing oh, what a great idea um, okay yeah, yeah so quite niche you know, then mm, absolutely it's it, it, it is niche but you know what we found is we get sort of everything from 14 15 year old kids at school saying oh i'm going to make it big i'm going to be a professional can you can you send me lots of free stuff yes but i'll tell you what's a really interesting tangent to this is Go on. when you look at their instagram profile they've got about four or five hundred thousand followers what the 14 or 15 year old kids yeah now, well, well then you'd send them stuff, wouldn't you? Well, what's happening is that people have started to buy followers. This isn't something that's new. This has been going on for a while. But especially Instagram and Twitter, you see people buying followers. And this is where the line for us is really tough because, because we're a small company, our stock is of high value to us. Now, if, you know, if, uh, if Wayne Rooney or David Beckham said, can we have a support, then, yeah, that's great. But we find it really difficult to judge people because of this... Problem, so what criteria you know? do you use? Because some people are suggesting we're being a bit unfair to this this young woman. Uh, I, 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 she offered to film... This is from Katie, who's become one of my favourite tweeters in, in recent weeks. She offered to yeah. film a commercial for him to a targeted market where he could monitor all map views just in return for being paid in kind. Is that freeloading? Well, yes, it is, Katie, obviously, if during the process of monitoring those views and interactions that the, the numbers were tiny he's got no way of knowing in advance that's mm. what you're telling us isn't it is, is, is that if, if you've yeah. got no so how do you decide what's worth a punt and what isn't so we we really look into it you know another key indicator to this is if someone's got a million followers on instagram but their pictures are only getting 50 likes then there's something wrong isn't there uh. because you know there's a lot of of things that sort of link this up so we've we've really had to start to go to the point where we have to research the person on google and actually find out a lot really? more about them and make sure that they've so you know, this is this is a thing. world then that is largely undiscovered for for, for for large swathes of the population but the people at the proverbial coalface are, are, are on a right old crash course Absolutely. I mean, you know, it was something that as we got bigger and bigger, we would have a few emails a day. But yeah, we get emails into our inbox. We get 40 or 50 Instagram messages a day for people asking for free stuff. Uh, and yeah, it's really started to take over. I think a lot of people think 
Uh, it's really easy to be one of these social media gurus and sort of advertise stuff. But I think something that we're concerned about as well is that where maybe you've got more morals than most is that a lot of people are happy to give you a review even if they think it's good or bad. Yeah, that that would be a, that would be a caveat, wouldn't it? And that's probably uh, that's probably governed by regulations, but it's so new that the regulations might not have caught up with the technology yet. So, so you told me you get up to 50 a day of requests. How, mm. how, how many individuals do you send free stuff to every week? Yeah, n not a lot, really. We've really now defined our partners and our ambassadors and sort of who we want to work with. Um, you know, we choose sort of one or two from each of those individual sports, normally oh. sort of... You know, people who are up and coming, uh, we just haven't got the time to sit through with them all now. And, and you haven't got the money to pay millions of pounds to people for more traditional means of promotion, like getting Rafa Nadal to wear them at Wimbledon. No, exactly. Yeah. You know, so, you know, I guess what we don't want to do is sort of shoot ourselves in the foot because we want people to hear about us and, you know, talk about us and want our brand. But, you know... Right, we mark me at 200. I, I, I appreciate I'm not your target audience. Um, uh, I need support just because of age. Hey, have you ever thought about that as a sideline? <laughs> James, I'm happy to send you a support. <laughs> <laughs> need all the support I can get, Dan. But uh, here you go. Mark this out of ten, all right? 280,000 followers on Twitter. Routinely, by which I would mean more than once or twice a week, my, my tweets go into five figures on likes. Mm. What, what, what am I good for? How many jock straps am I going to get for free? Oh, I, James, I'll give you unlimited supply. <laughs> unlimited supply for you. Just have to... Just tell me what you want. <laughs> what you really, really want. Dan, mind how you go. And best of luck with the business. That, that sounds like a you know a young British business really making some headway in a, in a potentially crowded market. So, so if you do need any athletic support, Bear Hug would be my recommendation. Do not send me any free stuff, Dan, because I, I want that to hang there as a sincere comment. Man, what a tangled web we weave. We've got some amazing calls coming in. Um, uh, uh, but we need to catch up with the uh, meeting between the Foreign Secretary and the US Secretary of State yesterday. Oddly, um, Foreign Secretary's uh, flunkies and fags spent, I mean that in the public school sense of the word, spent uh, yesterday afternoon ringing newspapers trying to get them to run stories about Boris Johnson seeking to undermine the Prime Minister and pretend that he cares about the NHS. Remarkable state of affairs given that he had a meeting with um, a man who is potentially one of our most crucial allies post-Brexit, so we'll find out from Theo what the Foreign Office has to say about that meeting rather than what Boris Johnson's friends have to say about the Cabinet meeting that he used to seek to further undermine Theresa May. 12.36 is the time. Haig is in Golders Green. Haig, talk to me about the future. Hi, yes. Um, I believe the issue is with two things. One, the woman or girl wanted to get attention by calling herself out. So I'm going to put that aside for now. The other one is about social media influencers yes. trying to... Um, how, don't know really how to describe it, but it's it's not too bad what they're doing. Essentially, it's almost freelancing advertising. So instead of paying for big market campaign, campaigns in newspapers, TV networks, etc., you're paying maybe the maybe it's two hundred pounds a night for a hotel, fifty pounds for a dress. Uh, it, it's across so many markets like Instagram models. I, 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 under, I understand that. Here's my problem. Maybe you can help yeah. me with it. What if it's rubbish? What if she gets there? Her breakfast is cold. The toilet in her room hasn't been flushed. She finds a hair on her pillow. Um, uh, there, there's a there's a used prophylactic under the bed that she finds when she's putting her slippers away. See what happens then, mate? Does she pay the bill if it's awful? Now that is a very good question. Because That's what I'm here for, Hague. Normally, it's when you because I've had experience of taking on these kind of things. Um, being a YouTuber, I've mostly it's small time stuff. I mean, I've been paid to come out to air shows to do coverage. Um, what, what do you YouTube about? What do, what do you make films about? I do a mixture of things. I do silly videos about video games, and I do historically focused around 10 to 15 minute long mini documentaries. About? It's a mixed bag. Uh, World War II, mainly. Oh, how interesting. But you won't have much crossover on that, unless the video games you're playing are war games, mostly. Ah, that's the thing, they are. Ah, clever. I like it. And can I, I ask like, whether you do you earn a, do you make a living doing this, or is it a hobby that, 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 that you've managed to make a few quid out of? And that's also extra interesting because it's a, it was a hobby at first. Yeah. And I've not been able to do it full time, but I'm really close. I went to university studying business and accounting for three years. Yes. When I finished, I had around 50,000 subscribers. And I thought if I do focus on making longer and more videos that I'm proud of over the silly one, yeah. I may actually be able to go full time. Although the silly ones are very popular as well, from what I know of this world. 
Oh, they are. But with the way YouTube, this is another topic as well, the way YouTube works, shorter videos don't make as much revenue as longer ones. Ah, uh, OK. OK, I'm learning. I really am. And, and let's go back to that brilliant question I just asked you, lest you think you've got away with not answering it. What happens if the hotel, what happens if the hotel is rubbish? Because here, for me, is the moral problem. I get in touch with the hotel. I say I've got 280,000 followers on, on Twitter. I've got a million listeners to my radio show. Um, give me a free weekend in, in your hotel, Mr. Glen Eagles, and I'll be wax lyrical about it all next week on the show. And then I get there, and it's all of the things I just described to you. And then on Monday, I come on air and I don't mention it. And then the 11 o'clock break, I get a call from Glen Eagles saying, hang on a minute, you owe us a week's worth of free promotion. I, can't, I mean, it'd be breaking all sorts of laws doing it on the radio. So uh, hang on a minute, you owe us a week's worth of free promotion on Twitter. What happens then? Um, I guess it will depend on the integrity of the person doing it and whether they sign the contract. Because I've only ever had to sign a contract once for a bit of work I did. Well, you're not, you're not going to be doing any advertising, because when you say it's like freelance advertising, there won't be any advertising appearing in traditional media without contracts being signed, will there? No. Whereas with YouTube, it's, it's possible to do the advertising on a very personal one-to-one -one mm. email basis. It's like the Wild West, then. And, and while there will be good guys, there will also be bad guys doing things. When I did sign a contract, it did allow me to also discuss the negative points. I, I didn't have to give a glowing review. I didn't well, that's because you're a good man. Review. That's because you're a good man and, a, and, a, and an honourable guy, isn't it? But there'll be plenty of people in, in, in the, in the uh, internet sphere who are neither of the above. And that's outside of my territory. I wouldn't know how... Because I've only <laughs> taken on things that I knew that were good. I, I really was, like I was, you, Haig. I don't know why. I, I, no, I just uh, Sometimes when you're speaking to someone, you find yourself sort of warming up inside and thinking, I could listen to this fellow for ages. Can I find out... Can I watch some of your, your videos? Or, or, or I mean, yeah. can I, would you like to tell people about your YouTube channel? Yes, I, I, if I can. Yeah, I would of course you that. can. Absolutely. Go on. OK, my YouTube channel is The Iron Armenian. I came up with that name almost uh, eight years ago now. For, it's a silly thing for when I was creating an account for a video game. Yes. Mm. But my YouTube channel used to focus on silly videos, short little funny skits. But over time, I focused into historical videos. The way YouTube clickbait kind of a... Uh, leans towards top five videos. Yes. My videos are all named top five and they focus on weird planes or weird tanks during World War II. I don't glorify any style during World War II, but I love technology, obscure planes you never heard of, weird tanks that do interesting niche things. And I love reading up about them, finding old textbooks that have the original documents of how they worked. And that's what I cover. So if you do love reading about weird, watching videos about weird things, I've done the research. Come and watch it. It's a pretty okay video, I think. Oh, right. Google top five weird planes or top five weird tanks. And just look out for Iron Armenian. And I think is it the... Is there a definite article? Is it the Iron Armenian or is it just Iron Armenian? Oh, it's technically the Iron Armenian, but Google will bring you to my channel somehow. If you put it in either way. And... You don't have to answer this question because because um, I'm, I'm sort of being a bit cynical, not about you, but about this world. What's the mm -hmm. biggest thing you've received that you haven't, or the most valuable thing you've received that you haven't paid for, but you have? I mean, what was the thing you signed the contract for? That might be the biggest. The one I signed the contract for was to do video game coverage of a game. They said, would you like to do a few streams of a game and a few videos of it? It's what I scream on the side, but that's a different story. No, I understand. Um, that's uh, when people I... can watch you playing. Yes. Yes. So I'm not that old, um, hey. You don't have to sound that surprised. I knew what streaming Oh, was. it's a completely different market. It's ruthless over there as well. I'm sure it is. So did you get money for that, or did you just get a free game? I got money for that. Can I ask how much or not? I got 350 US dollars for uh, coverage okay. of the game. So if you were doing that every day, um, or if you had ten times as many followers and you got five times as much money, then um, you can see. I, can, I wish you the very best. I really mean that. I, I, I'm never really backwards in coming forwards when it comes to telling a caller that I don't like them, so I should probably make a habit. You just sound really, really nice, Hagen. I wish you the very best with the Iron Armenian. I truly do. Rebecca is in Maidenhead. I might have run out of bonhomie and kindness now, Rebecca, so you're taking your chances by ringing me now. Oh, dear. I'm a first-time caller. Yeah, all right, then. I'll put, I'll, put that in. I'll put that in the positive column. What would you like to tell me? Okay, um, thanks for taking my call. Um, I work with bloggers quite often. Um, I own my own small business, and um, bloggers have been really useful for me to get um, to extend my reach on social oh, media okay. and to yeah. So it's been quite good cheap advertising for me, actually. So um, they they really do have their good points. Um, However, when when you um, use the word blogger or vlogger, are these people yes. that I would have heard of? 
Um, well, not necessarily because um, I, I work with bloggers who, ref who ref their audience reflects my customers. So my customers are mainly women who are 30, age 30 plus. So you probably wouldn't have heard of them unless you read blogs written by women who are age 30 plus. <laughs> and what, what, what stuff do you make? <laughs> Okay, um, I make engraved um, gifts. So I make things out of wood, um, photo frames. Uh, that sounds really cards, nice, but and, and so hangers. And, and so, 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 how do you choose who's worth sending free stuff to and who isn't? And do you approach them or do they approach you? So it's a bit of both. So sure. I approach people, but they also I get approached perhaps once a week. So not as often as your first caller. Um, and what I do is I'll um, have a look into them, so I'll, I'll investigate them. So the first thing I'll do is mainly I'll look at, I'll look at their age, um, so that the young lady who, um, who, who approached the hotel, I mean, she was only in her early 20s, so for me, early 20s, that, that doesn't really work for me. They're not the type of people who are buying my products, so I probably wouldn't go any further with somebody of that age. But then if I've established that um, they're around the age that I'm looking at, um, they're female, because um, I'm selling gifts and most of my customers are women yes, buying these gifts. of course. Um, so, um, and usually mums, because um, one of my products is um, kids' handwriting. So they'll send me the kids' handwriting and then I can engrave it onto a chopping board. Oh, or lovely. A frame or metal hanger. They're really cool. I oh. love them. They're really, really cool. But do you know what I got for yeah. Christmas? I didn't know about you, but the kids got me a... I always lose my glasses. It's a standing joke at home. So the kids got me a... A metal glasses case engraved with a special message from them about how daddy can never lose his glasses anymore. And oh, it, it, if that had oh, been lovely. in, it wasn't in their handwriting. I didn't even know that was a thing. What's your company yeah. called? If you if you want to um, tell people. Oh yeah, I'd love to. That would be amazing. <laughs> my company is called Hugo's Workshop. Okay, Hugo's work. Who's yeah, Hugo? My oldest son's called Hugo. Oh bless! So I, love I, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And so, He's a baby. the story. I mean, that we're discussing. Mm. It, it, your experiences speak to it, but it, they're not the same. Is, is there a goodie and a baddie in this story, or is it just a sort of clash of cultures that haven't really encountered each other before? Yeah, I think it probably is a clash of cultures. Yeah, I do now. The guy, he, you know, he, he publicised that letter, but he didn't put the lady's um, details out there. So he didn't publicly embarrass her, but she's jumped on the opportunity to get a bit of notoriety, which actually is quite clever of her, really. I mean, we've all heard of her now, and we'd never have heard of her before, had we? No. I, I, to be honest with you, I couldn't tell you what her name was now. If you, if you held a gun to my head, I couldn't tell you what her name no, was, but still lots true, of... But we've all seen her face, and I would recognise her face. Um, you I know, haven't I've actually seen, seen her face. Her face. I'm spoiling this now. I haven't seen oh, her face. I, I, really I, no, I have seen her face. I have seen her face. Uh, that's brilliant. And good luck with Hugo's uh, workshop. That sounds like a lovely thing. Lots of people are going to look it up. I've just seen the first uh, Iron Armenian new follower pop up on my Twitter feed as well. 12.46 is the time. What an interesting conversation. Curiouser and curiouser, this world of freebies and vlogging and blogging. Even curiouser to my mind. And look, I get stuff wrong. I want to make that clear. There's no claim on this programme that we're right about everything all of the time. Um, I can't remember the last time we were wrong, but I'm sure we have been. The problem I've got today is not understanding how our so-called Foreign Secretary could have a meeting with the United States Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson, um, uh, in London yesterday, and yet today's newspapers are full of Boris Johnson's friends telling journalists that he's going to cause problems for Theresa May at, at the Cabinet by pretending that he really cares about the NHS. Um, on the record, I think, Boris Johnson saying in the past that people will value the service more if they have to pay for it. In fact, if you, if you look at Open Britain on social media, an interesting organisation, they've put together a little collection. Actually, I've just tweeted it from my account, so you can see it there. A little collection of prominent Brexiters talking about the NHS. And, um, yeah, fill your boots. So I tasked our political editor, Theo Osherwood, with finding out about this desperately important meeting, and I, I gather he has secured some fairly enormous scoops. Theo, over to you. Uh, yes, I've been on the Foreign Office website, and we have the update, which was sent out uh, at 6.34 yesterday uh, evening uh, from the Foreign Office press office, and the Boris Johnson had hosted... Uh, this, this, this could be loosely described as Boris Johnson being Foreign Secretary, rather yeah. than Boris Johnson being uh, attention-seeking, undermining 
minor of Theresa May. So there's a separation between uh, the civil service on this one. This is where the statement has come from, and yes. then the political advisers who have uh, briefed uh, the, uh, the Times newspaper today, saying that uh, allies, they're described as allies yes. of the foreign secretary, saying that he has a track record of winning, that he won't relent from demands for an extra hundred million pounds a week after yeah, yeah, Brexit. Yeah. yeah. So we have the statement uh, from the foreign. Uh, these are the civil servants, which was sent out uh, very dry. It's known as a readout in Westminster parlance. Uh, on Iran, this is Mr Tillerson and Boris Johnson reflected on recent developments and discussed the UK and US's respective views on the Iran nuclear uh, deal. On Syria, the Foreign Secretary express, expressed his support for Secretary Tillerson's recent speech on the Syrian crisis. The Secretary of State and Foreign Secretary dis discussed how to move the political process that would lead to the end of the Assad uh, regime. Incidentally, mm. Boris Johnson didn't raise any of this uh, at the Cabinet meeting today, but he did contribute uh, to uh, the debate, which was an hour long, on the NHS and right. what needed to happen uh, outside of his brief Downing Street desperate James to play it down. Lots of contributions from different members of the cabinet. Prime Minister led the discussions and described how the flu back, crisis... back to the Foreign Office there. Yeah. What did what happened with regard to Yemen? There's any just some big scoops there. Let me um, yeah, let me just uh, on Yemen they agreed on the importance of moving forwards towards a political solution that would end the humanitarian uh, suffering. Was there previously a, a, a school of thought that suggested it wasn't important to move forwards towards a political so solution no, that would end no, the humanitarian no, suffering? No, no. No, no. Okay. Well, um, I mean, in, but but there, the, the politics behind this, James, is really important because this is Boris on the NHS trying to seize the initiative. There's a feeling that... No, well, uh, this is also the British media letting him, Theo. Okay, all right. <laughs> No, the, 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 he's trying to seize the initiative. There's a feeling amongst the Brexiteers that the civil servants have uh, got control, that, uh, you know, what we saw, um, uh, you know, at the end of last year with, uh, you know, Theresa May's deal to move on to uh, transition talks, mm. that was all part of, um, uh, that was all part of, if you like, uh, acquiescence to the European Union and, of course, Philip Hammond, the Chancellor, when he arrived at uh, the leading uh, meeting today in the European Council of Foreign Ministers, insisted that Boris Johnson was just the Foreign Secretary, that he hadn't taken over the government. But interestingly, it's another member of the Treasury, actually, I should say, former member of the Treasury, that's causing the consternation amongst the Brexiteers, a man called Nicholas McPherson, yes. uh, who's former Permanent Secretary, who's tweeted two tweets, uh, which is getting people, you know, the likes of Boris Johnson. A reason for cautious optimism, because, of course, he is a Remain only served under mm. George Osborne. What HMG, that's Her Majesty's Government, has said and what it has done on EU, EU negotiations are very different. We will end up more integrated with EU than Brexiteers hope and Remainers fear. And this is why Boris and the like are getting very worked up, feeling that they need to, you know, ruffle their feathers, show their plumage, make, you know, the noises off. Provide no evidence, slam out some sound bites, deal in some empty slogans and rely upon the chomping masses to support them. Exactly. Happy days. Theo, well, so just to sum up on that meeting with the United States Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, the man who arguably could be Boris Johnson's most important ally post-Brexit, they talked about some stuff and had a cup of tea. Yeah. Okay. 12.56 is the time. Theo Rushwood and I... Batman and Robin are uh, trying desperately and vainly to um, bring a little bit of sense into some coverage of this ongoing political saga. Let's close today. We may have time for both of you, actually. Apologies to everyone we're not going to have time for. Charlie's in Twickenham. Back to this blogging conversation. What can you tell us, Charlie? Hi, James. Um, well, so I um, used to be a blogger. I used to be a dating blogger. I used to get quite a few freebies. Um, I've also done. What's a dating the... blogger? I mean, obviously you went on <laughs> dates and blogged about it, but what happens if you fall in love? Do you have to retire? Um, yeah, well, not, not really, probably, <laughs> though I didn't fall in love. Um, I, so one of the things I used to do is recommend date venues um, in London. So I'd go along to restaurants and write about, write about them, and if they were good, I'd include them on the blog. But, um, and what did I, you get in return? Just a free meal. Um, so you'd tell well, them that you were going to write about them on the blog? Yeah, yeah. So, so okay. the, the arrangement I had was, was normally with PR companies. So the PR companies would send me to different restaurants, and if, if I had a bad experience, I wouldn't write about it, and I'd just feed back to them why it was bad. Okay. And and they would prefer that to the negative. So you were quite prominent then, if you had a PR company engaged. Um, well, the, the PR companies would come to me. Um, so so and that was and so I I very rarely approached the hotel in, wow. in the way you know in the, the the companies in the way that, that this girl approached the, the, yes. the hotel. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, to be honest, I'm, I'm kind of on the 
offence because obviously I agree with the, the principle of it. I, you know, and as some of your other callers have been saying, I do think it's quite, it can be quite a useful form of advertising for some companies. However, when I, I mean, and, and I haven't read, um, read read the email or anything. All I've heard is the statement that you played. I, that, it made me cringe a bit because she wasn't bullied by that guy. She chose to volunteer her well, name. Of course, but um, she's, and, and that, she just, knows what she's doing, and she's she's no, ended up. With lots of people know her name now who didn't know it before. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> um, Why did you think, stop? Why did you stop being a dating blogger? I, uh, to be honest, I, I got a bit bored writing about my love life, and, and the, the, the blog ended up springboarding a company, you know, me launching my own company, so I now run uh, the industry awards internationally for the online dating industry. Oh, so you're very stayed clever. In there. <laughs> oh, you're very, very clever. Uh, there's a lot of money in, a, in in award ceremonies if you can find the right kind of niche, isn't there? Sure. Maybe. <laughs> I'm going to answer that. Charlie, very careful. Where's my invitation to the International Kebab Awards I, I was promised last year? Do you, can you pull some strings for me there? <laughs> I can't, but you can come to the dating ones. <laughs> They're probably not as fun, though. <laughs> playing with fire, Charlie. Seriously, playing with fire. 12.58 is the time. I don't mean me. I mean all the women. 12.58 is the time. Speaking of women, is she... I really am. What a segue. That was the best ever. Literally the worst ever, <laughs> as it turns out. But anyway, thanks very much, James. I hit the mirror's top, top.